Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about some coffee shots of CSM Domain 3 and it is the second part of the video. I already uploaded the first part, you do check that first part also so get the better clarity. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so first question is, Enterprise is planning to migrate its services to third-party cloud. What is the most effective way to measure governance of the cloud? It means we have Enterprise here and they want to migrate the services on the cloud. So what is the best way to manage the governance? Option A and to an audit, which makes sense, which include the different type of results we can basically ask for. Just by doing a PT, we can able to see the visibility about how secure is the application. But in some cases, it will not, the client will not, the service provider will not allow you to do the PT. In some case, they have allowed the VA, but VA will only give the high level visibility about the technical things. Policy is the best way to check the governance, but what about the effectiveness of the implementation? So that comes from the A, A for alpha. So and to an audit will basically provide the complete visibility when you're doing an audit in the cloud. You will request for the control report, you can request for the VA report, you can request for the PT report. So this include everything. That's why one of the best way you can able to measure the third party cloud is audit. That's why there is a one statement in the CSM is writing. It does not mean happen. Go look and verify. So whenever you deal with the cloud provider, whenever you deal with third party provider, whatever they agreed in the contract that need to be validated with the help of audit only. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay, second question, which of the following is the most effective way to protect data in mobile device scope of the question is most it mean most regular and scope is basically protect data option a access control just having access control is a very high level word encryption makes sense create a policy is more like a directory control authentication can be bypass so the most effective control is encryption or in the exam if you get a question answer is mdm I will tell you the reason. See, if your mobile is basically protected with the password, it is easy to bypass. But if the data is encrypted, even you lost your device, still it maintains the persistent security. So always remember, whenever any question talking about in the exam, data security answer is encryption. If encryption is not there. The second best option from the enterprise management point of view is MDM. So in this case, I'm going with the answer encryption. Okay, let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay, so in which stage of SDLC security must be considered? Option A, functional requirement, but functional requirement is the second stage. The first stage is initiation where we having a meeting with the customer. And then based on that, we document the functional requirement. Development will become more, uh, uh, more late because before development, we have a design, we have a requirement. So any kind of a changes we need in development, first we need to do changes in the function and uh, design requirement. Design is basically fair with design the security, but that is based on the function requirement. So only option which is close is D because we as according to the best practice, security should be introduced as early as possible. Okay, that's what the answer is D. If D is not there, then A. If A is not there, then C. If C is not there, then only option left is B. Because if we go by the SDLC, first step is basically called as an initiation based on that we have a function requirement then we design and then we developed and then we deploy so make sure you should introduce the security as early as possible if you fail to interpret the security requirement in the phase one then you move to phase two and according to that you will proceed with the phase two might be based on a phase two we design but tomorrow if you say okay we need to add security function first we need to go to function requirement we need to modify the requirement and then come to the design so that's why we say security should introduce as early as possible in the organization. That's why we went with the D as an answer. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay. Which of the following is the most effective way to measure the security training and awareness program? Most is a keyword mean most regular. Okay. So option A post training increase in the number of incident report. Post training decrease in the number of incident reports. See, during a awareness training, we basically guide them. If you find this kind of symptoms, report the incident. 
if you find this kind of a symptoms report the incident so before training it was a 50 incidents and after training and awareness we have reported 70 which is a good thing it means people are more aware about the things the thin line difference in training and awareness is training modify the skill where awareness modify the behavior post training decrease in number of incident report it's a concern so be removed comply with the policy is just a normal thing but that is not how we can able to measure the effectiveness number of secure training material created but what about how we basically perceive so always remember one of the best way to measure the security awareness training is increase in the number of incident report and decrease in a security violation so in this case the most close option is basically a so let's move to the next question thank you very good question which of the following is most essential to create when managing complex solution and process scope here is managing complex security policy is the high level statement it is the intent of the management okay it is not introducing to manage the complexity because complex solution process come in the operation level and policy is just a high level statement yes security architecture makes sense because it is a framework which is used to organize and manage all the building blocks makes sense standard is a tool by which we implement the requirement we don't create a management sponsorship definitely the most successful metrics we required for running a complex solution is sponsorship because they are the one who approve the budget but question is only talking about essential to create and the question talking about from a operation point of view mean complex solutions and process so always introduce whenever there is a complex solutions complex process we have we need to interrelate that and that can be done with the help of security architecture so that is why we going with the answer is a b for beta let me give an example how the architecture is basically used in the organization now suppose this is basically your current state state okay and uh, you don't have a very good food habits you don't go for, to gym you just continuously work and all that and your desire state you want to go for a 10 km marathon so you want to go for 10 km marathon now question is for 10 km marathon you need to go to gym first you need to have a running practice you need to have a nutrition so this is the complexity one complexity two and complexity three we need to organize this in a particular sequence and that is why we creating a workout plan and that workout plan in which we organize everything first i will go to gym then i will go for run and then i have a nutrition so we have organized our complexity in a form of block and that concept is called as a workout plan and the workout plan in this case is called as an architecture same like in the company we have a multiple processes we have a multiple practices so we need to integrate all the process and practice so we organize them in a form of building blocks and that comes under the architecture that's why the answer is b is it clear let's move to the next part thank you so question is which of the following is the most secure mechanism by which you can secure the wireless network see password is a very generic thing so we have a system a we have a system b they enter the same password and same password sent over the network another name of the password is also called as a shared key so c and d removed wpep is basically introduce a key size of 64 in which 40 bit is the key and 24 bit is the iv but one concern with wep it is easy to break the pattern because after 5000 packet 24 bit iv is basically repeat so more secure than wep is basically wpa because here the key size is 128 in which 80 bit is a key size and 48 bit is the iv value so overall the key size is wpa so wpa is basically more secure but if you get a question wep wpa wpa2 then wpa2 is basically more secure let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay what is the main goal of information security awareness and training in the enterprise the question talking main goal in mean ultimate goal see when we conducting awareness program our objective is to make sure you know the responsibility toward the security because ultimately the responsibility security lies with the people accountability lies with the senior management but responsibility lies with the people so we need to just clarify what you carry a responsibility in the organization from security point of view and what we carry as a custodian of security from the organization point of view so option a communicate what people responsibility toward the security makes sense 
to prepare student for certification not necessary every training and awareness we prepare for certification to comply with the organization policy yaar it it is just like obtaining a certificate reports and all that but that is not a main goal inform people about new threats definitely true but d is basically part of the a by informing people about new threat and issue we make them aware about their responsibility towards the organization that's why the answer is a for alpha now recently there is a threat is happening is lot of people receiving a whatsapp call that is a perfect example so i'm we are just in awareness workshop we explaining them about this new threat by which they take the responsibility from a security point of view what they need to do their responsibility is that if they found something suspicious report the incident to the management report the incident to the incident management team that's why the answer is a for alpha let's start with the next part thank you very good question who will be in the best position to define the level of access and security of information for the business see system designer is the one only design the things to build the systems data custodian will manage the data data owner is the one who define the access now let's take an example we have a infosec train so there is a customer who shown his interest for cism training so there is a sales owner who manages the lead so sales owner said that okay please protect this data according to gdpr because this lead is coming from europe so in in infosec train this sales owner is the data owner okay he defined the level of access and all that client is very finicky client is basically very concerned about his email id so make sure wherever you keep your email id make sure you should be protected with the strong encryptions and all that then we have a security team who basically ensure the protection of our data so in this case they are called as a data custodian okay customer is a user for us so question is best position to define the level of access and security so close answer is basically data owner because he know the value of a data he know the classification data so based on that he will instruct how to protect the data and then data custodian will manage that things so data owner is basically accountable and data custodian is responsible okay that's why the answer is b for beta let's move to the next question thank you okay aspirants is a financial services and has a presence in multiple countries management wants to build a information security program to have a solid defense which of the following is a more significant factor needed while building a program okay aspirant financial service has a presence in multiple company con- countries management want to build information security program to have a solid defense which of the following is a more significant factor while building a program option a culture of different countries definitely as a security manager if i'm working in india if i'm working in uae if i have a company in saudi we have a company in qatar so uae has their own way of manager security saudi basically has their own way of way of managing a security and uh, uh, other countries basically have their own way of managing a country managing the things so even you introducing a policies and everything and you forget their cultures if you fail to interpret the culture they will not follow that so culture of a different country is most important thing okay policy of a different enterprise makes sense awareness of the program is also very important but what is assurance they will follow that availability of skill is there but that can be manageable but the most important thing is basically called as a culture because based on a culture we drive the values based on a value we create a policy that's why the answer is a for alpha okay next question is what is the most effective to prevent social engineering attack in the enterprise option a install secure password but what is an assurance that they will share the password with others effective security awareness training definitely that modify the behavior strong authorization as i said if they share the username password with others <laughs> there is no point of having a strong authorization increasing a frequency of password change definitely but if they sharing a password you can't control that so most effective way you can able to prevent the social engineering attack is providing a effective security awareness training guide them about you know what do and don'ts you can share and all that because no matter you have a strong authorization password change if the victim is vulnerable for social engineering where he will sharing some details unknowingly or he clicking on some phishing emails and all that then all controls get failed so that is why it is very important to conduct security awareness training by that we trying to modify their behavior that's why the answer is b for beta let's move to the next coffee shot thank you 
ओके वॉट इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव वे टू इवेल्युएट द रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन इन द एंटरप्राइज आर वाई इज बेसिकली द आउटपुट वी गेट फ्रॉम द इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एंड ऑल दैट सो वी हैव अ टू थिंग वी हैव अ टी सी ओ एंड वी हैव अ आर ओ आई टी सी ओ इज अ इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट यू डू एंड आर ओ आई इज द रिटर्न वी गेट आफ्टर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग और जनरेटिंग रेवेन्यू फ्रॉम द बिजनेस सो क्वेश्चन सिंग इफेक्टिव वे टू इवेल्युएट द रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन ए आउटपुट मैप विद द बिजनेस ऑब्जेक्टिव मेक सेंस एग्जाम्पल आई हैव इम्प्लीमेंटेड अ फायर वॉल एंड एबल टू सेव माई सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इंसिडेंट्स एंड बाय दैट आई एम एबल टू क्रिएटिंग अ वैल्यू दैट इज मे माई आर ओ आई ऑप्शन बी आउटपुट मैप विद द ऑपरेशन ऑब्जेक्टिव विच इज नॉट ट्रू ओके सो बी इज पार्ट ऑफ अ ए बेस्ड ऑन अ कस्टमर डेटा प्रोडक्शन इफ आई एम यूजिंग दैट सोल्यूशन इंटरनल टू द ऑर्गनाइजेशन एंड मैप विद के पी एन के आर आई अगेन दैट इज ओनली वे टू मेजर द मैट्रिक्स ओके एंड के पी एन के आर आई इज नॉट ऑलवेज क्रिएट फ्रॉम आर ओ आई पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो ऑनली क्लोज ऑप्शन इज बेसिकली ए फॉर एल्फा आउटपुट इज बेसिकली मैप्ड विद द बिजनेस ऑब्जेक्टिव बिकॉज इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट वी डेट वी नीड टू एनालाइज द रिटर्न बेस्ड ऑन द वैल्यू ओके वैल्यू इज वॉट अचीविंग अ बिजनेस ऑब्जेक्टिव I am attending a CSAM. I cleared the exam. There is a salary hike. That is basically met my objective. So that is how you calculate the ROI. So that's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. So question is: Is we need to consider prior to deploying update to the production server. It means before deploying the patches to the production server. What is the most effective practice? Option A: Make a certain that full system back backup. Second is download the patch from vendor website. But what is an assurance the vendor is uh, the vendor is safe or the patch that we downloading from vendor is secure? Deploy updates in the stages definitely. If it's a complex environment, confirm the update meet the user objective. That's most important thing. But before we deploying any kind of an update, we have to take a backup of the systems because tomorrow if the backup get failed, even you deploy it in a stages, if it failed, then we need to roll back. So if you don't take a backup, you might lose your previous data. so always remember one thing whenever you deploying any kind of an update to production server first take a backup okay so that is all from my side team do let me know how do you find this video and uh, based on that feedback and all that i'm planning to create a domain for video also okay so this is all from my side thank you for watching my video and thanks for trusting prabnair and their content take care bye